If you've been watching the channel for a while, you already know how these videos go. But if you're new here, this is 10 tips for the iPhone that I reckon most iPhone owners have absolutely no idea about. Okay, let's get into it. While we wait for Apple to roll out the new and improved version of Siri, there are still a few things that the voice assistant can do better than anything else on the iPhone. And one of them is finding things within settings. I've noticed recently, and I don't know if this is a bug in iOS 26, that the search feature in settings can be really hit and miss. For example, on my iPhone running iOS 26, if I type motion to find vehicle motion cues, nothing comes up. In fact, if I type vehicle, still nothing appears, even though you'd expect it to. There is an easy workaround though. Long press the side button on your iPhone and ask Siri to find it for you. For example, say open vehicle motion cues in settings and Siri will take you straight there. It worked for loads of other settings that I tested too. So next time that you can't find something using the search bar, try asking Siri instead. You might be pleasantly surprised. There's a feature on your iPhone that allows it to speak any text that it sees on screen. There's also an even better option where it can spell individual words for you if you need it to. To enable this, go to settings, then accessibility, and tap read and speak. Make sure speak selection is turned on by tapping into it and toggling the feature on. While you're here, you might also want to enable highlighting. This means that your iPhone will highlight the text that it's reading or spelling aloud, which can be really helpful. You can choose whether to highlight words, sentences, or both, and customize the highlight style, either underline or background color, along with colors for words and sentences. Once this is set up, you can use it almost anywhere on your iPhone. For example, if you've received an email and you want your iPhone to read a specific line of text, long press on the text, until the selection tool appears. Use the drag bars to highlight the text that you want to read out loud, then press the little right pointing arrow in the contextual menu, choose speak, and your iPhone will read the content to you. If you select a full sentence, you'll only see the speak option, but if you select a single word, you'll also see the option to have your iPhone spell that word out loud. If you've ever used an app like Calm or Headspace on your iPhone to play sleep sounds while you're trying to fall asleep, you might not realize that you can play sleep music on your iPhone without downloading any extra apps or paying for subscriptions. Here's how to do it. Go into Control Center, then long press to enter edit mode. Tap add a control at the bottom of the screen, then scroll down until you find the ambient music selection. You'll see four options here, sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. The process works the same for all of them, but I'm gonna show you using sleep. Tap sleep and it will be added to your control center. But before you exit edit mode, tap on the sleep icon to access more options. You'll see that you can choose a playlist for sleep sounds. Tap where it says sleep sounds and you can pick from sleep sounds, bedtime beats, sound bath or piano sleep. Or you can use music from your own library. Hi, Editing Tom here. I am very aware that the playlists that you just saw on screen do not match what I said in the video. Very quick explanation for that. It was recorded using this phone, which is a 16 Pro Max uh, logged into a demo account that doesn't have a dedicated Apple Music subscription. Uh, I use this phone, which is a 17 Pro. This is logged into my personal Apple account, which does have uh, an Apple Music login active on it. I think that might be the difference between the two because the sleep playlists that you get on this are completely different to the sleep playlists that you get on this. Uh, don't know why, please don't at me. And anyway, back to the video. I'm gonna leave it on sleep sounds, but you can choose whichever you prefer. Once you've made your choice, tap to come out of that menu, then tap again to exit control center edit mode. Now, the next time that you want to listen to relaxing music to help you fall asleep, just press the sleep button and the music will start playing immediately. If you tap on the music player icon, you'll see that it plays in what is basically a slimmed down version of Apple Music. You can use the airplay button at the bottom to send the music to a Bluetooth speaker, or you can listen through headphones if you prefer. From my experience, the selection of music here is really good for falling asleep too. Speaking of falling asleep, it is Techtober, the busiest time of the year for me on this channel. And when things get hectic for me, the first thing that suffers is usually my sleep. I use my Apple Watch to track my sleep, which is fine, but all it really does is tell me what I already know, that I didn't get enough sleep. It doesn't actually help me sleep better. That's where today's partner Oslo comes in. These are the Oslo Sleep Buds. They're tiny, lightweight, and designed to be worn overnight. They connect to your iPhone via Bluetooth, so you can stream audio as you drift off. 
The Oslo app has a bunch of calming sounds built in, but the great thing here is that you're not limited to those sounds. You can listen to anything, Spotify, Calm, YouTube, audiobooks, podcasts. If your phone can play it, these can stream it. And you might be thinking, why not just wear your AirPods? Well, these last up to 10 hours, and unlike AirPods, they're comfortable enough to be worn all night. Even side sleeping isn't a problem. And when it comes to sleep, I hate silence. I prefer a bit of ambient noise. So these are perfect for that. And when I'm traveling, they're great for blocking out hotel noise or street sounds too. If you want to try them out for yourself, scan the QR code on screen or hit the link in the description and use my code PROHT to get $35 off your pair of Oslo sleep buds. If you often take photos of receipts or things like confirmation tickets, when you post something with recorded delivery, you might be pleased to know that your iPhone automatically organizes those photos for you. It sorts them into a specific folder in your photo library, so you can find them much more easily later. There are a few ways to access these. One is to open the Photos app, tap on Collections at the bottom, then scroll until you find Utilities. Tap Utilities, and you'll see an option called Receipts. That folder shows all the photos that your iPhone has identified as receipts. Another way is to go into the Photos app, tap the magnifying glass at the bottom, and type Receipts. The nice thing about this is that if you remember something specific about the receipt, you can include that too. For example, if it's a parking receipt, you could type Receipt Parking, and your iPhone is more likely to find it. You can also do this directly from Spotlight Search. Tap the search button on your home screen, type Receipts, then scroll down until you see the Photos from App section you'll see all the receipts that your iPhone has identified right there. And one last thing, if you ever want to clear out this folder, go back into the Photos app, into Utilities, and then tap Receipts. Press Select at the top, then Select All, and tap the Delete button in the bottom right corner to quickly remove everything from the Receipts folder. Here's a widget-related tip that you probably don't know. If you long press on your home screen, tap the Edit button in the top left corner, and choose Add Widget, the top result that you'll see is Smart Stack. A Smart Stack is where your iPhone automatically chooses from a range of widgets that it thinks you might find useful throughout the day based on your usage and habits. You can add it to your home screen and while still in edit mode, tap into it to scroll through the different widgets that your iPhone has included. If there's one that you don't want, tap the little minus button to remove it from the stack. If you'd rather have more control, you can create a stack yourself. To do this, tap edit, then choose add widget. Skip the Smart Stack option and find the first widget that you'd like to include. Add it to your home screen, then repeat the process. Go back into Edit, choose Add Widget again, and pick another widget that's the same size as the first. That part's really important. This only works with widgets that are all the same size. I'll do that one more time so that I've got three widgets showing, but you can add as many as you like. Once they're on your screen, drag and drop one widget on top of another to create a stack. Then drag the third one onto the same stack. You can tap into the stack to rearrange the order or remove any that you don't want. When you're happy, press done in the top right corner and your custom widget stack is ready. You can swipe through the widgets just like a smart stack. The only difference is that this won't update automatically based on your usage. It's a manual stack. Think of it like a folder of apps, but in widget form, giving you complete control over what's inside. By the way, if you're enjoying the content here, you should definitely check out The Proper Weekly. It's my free weekly newsletter that lands in your inbox every Friday, packed with tech news from the week, content I've been enjoying, and a handy tip for the Apple ecosystem. Just scan the QR code on screen to sign up, or follow the link in the description. If your iPhone supports Apple Intelligence, there is a feature in the Reminders app that you might have missed, which was added in iOS 26. Go into the Reminders app, and open a list, ideally one with lots of random tasks in it. Then press the ellipsis in the top right corner and choose Auto Categorize. Your iPhone will take a moment to use its on-device intelligence to categorize the items in your list based on what it thinks makes the most sense. In my experience, it is generally pretty good, although it is a bit of a shame that there isn't an override option or a way to be more specific about how you'd like things organized. Still, I found it really useful for bringing some order to chaos in really long reminders lists. Did you know that if you're listening to a song in Apple Music and you're really enjoying it, you can create your own station from that song? A station is basically a constantly updated and curated playlist based on the song that you're listening to. It's like saying, if you like this track, you'll probably like these ones too. To do this, when the song is playing, press the ellipsis button on the screen and choose Create Station. 
the station will be created automatically. The great thing is, you don't have to do anything else. Once the current song finishes, the next track will be part of your new station. You can keep listening for as long as you like, with songs of a similar style to the one that you originally chose continuing to play. It's a really good way to discover new music and keep the same vibe going when you're enjoying what you're listening to. I think tab groups in Safari are one of the most underused but really useful features, and I suspect that most people don't use them because Apple has made them seem more complicated than they are. But essentially, tab groups are exactly what they sound like, a group of tabs that you create yourself, usually because they're all related to a particular topic or project. Let me show you how to create one, along with a practical example of how to use it. In Safari, tap the ellipsis button at the bottom right of the screen, then choose All Tabs. Your tab groups are shown at the bottom of the screen. To create a new one, don't tap the plus button in the bottom left. Instead, swipe to the right of the last visible tab group, and you'll see a new group appear with the cursor ready in the name field. I'll call this one Holiday 2026, then press the blue tick button in the top right corner. You're now working within your new Holiday 2026 tab group. Next, I'll open a blank tab and start using sites like TripAdvisor, Yelp, or Booking.com, whatever I might need to research and plan a trip. Let's skip ahead to the point where I've now got a collection of tabs open that are all relevant to this trip. Here's where tab groups become really useful. Tap the ellipsis menu in the top left corner of the screen and you'll see a few options. The first one is copy links. It will say something like copy eight links depending on how many tabs you've got open. Tap that and you can then paste all of those links into something like messages or mail. They'll appear as a bulleted list with clickable links, making it really easy to share everything with someone else in one go. Another powerful option is share. Tap the ellipsis menu again and choose share. You'll see the name of your tab group with collaboration written underneath. This means that anyone that you share it with, for example, through messages, will be able to collaborate with you on that tab group. They'll have full access to view, add or remove tabs. So if you're planning a trip with someone else, you can create a shared tab group and both contribute to it in real time. Like I said earlier, I think the main reason that people don't use tab groups is because Apple made them seem more complex than they are. But once you get the hang of them, they are a really powerful part of the Safari experience and well worth exploring. You probably already know that the Maps app can show you walking routes, a way to walk from point A to point B. But did you know that you can actually create your own custom walking route, letting you take the long way around or stop by specific points along the way? To do this, start by opening the Maps app and creating a normal directions route. Just as a reminder, you do that by typing in the location that you want to get to, tapping the directions button, which usually defaults to the car icon if it's somewhere far away, and then adjusting the start point if needed. If you're walking from your current location, you can leave it as it is. Once you've got your start and end points, tap the little person icon to switch from driving to walking directions. By default, maps will give you the most direct route between the two points, but if you scroll down past those suggested routes, you'll see an option called Create a Custom Route. Tap on that and your iPhone will show a short animation at the bottom, then display your start point highlighted on the map. Zoom in to find the first place that you'd like to walk to, maybe a particular street, a park or a landmark, and tap on it. That becomes your first stop point and a route will appear connecting it to your start. Continue moving around the map, tapping on each additional point that you'd like to include. Each one gets added to your walking route as you go. When you reach your destination, you've built a complete custom route. If it's one you'd like to reuse, tap Save Route in the bottom left corner. You can even choose to turn it into a loop if you want to start and finish in the same place. When you're ready to walk to it, just press Directions in the bottom right corner to begin navigation. It's a great feature if you've recently moved somewhere new and you want to plan out a regular walking route or explore your own surroundings at your own pace. You probably already know that when you're on a website with an article, you can tap the website options button. That's the one just to the left of the address bar and choose show reader. This gives you a streamlined version of the article, removing distractions like adverts, and it also lets you customize things like the font, background, and text size. It makes reading long articles on your iPhone much easier. It's a great feature, but did you know that if you're on a website where you always prefer to use reader mode, you can set Safari to automatically open links from that site in reader mode every time. To do this, go to any article on the website that you want to set up, tap the website options button, and instead of choosing show reader, 
tap the ellipsis just above and to the right of it. Scroll down to the section called Website Settings, where you'll see the domain of the site that you're adjusting. Then simply toggle on Use Reader Automatically. Press the blue tick in the top right corner, and from now on, every page that you open on that website will automatically load in Reader Mode. You can still turn Reader Mode off the usual way by tapping the Website Options button in the address bar, and you can disable this setting completely at any time. If there's a particular site where you always find yourself switching on Reader Mode, this little trick can save you a lot of time. So there you go, that was 10 tips for the iPhone that I think most iPhone owners have no idea about. What about you? Did you learn anything new today? Or were there any tips that you think I should have included but didn't? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.